on the apostolic ministry, why is it important for the church to really embrace apostolic ministry? I think because we look at it, we understand the Bible says that the apostolic ministry is one of the foundations of the church. So if the, if the foundational piece, a major foundational piece is missing, then what we're really building on, the, everything that we're building, we're erecting upon this foundation is going to be faulty, and eventually the ministry will crumble, or the local church may crumble. So if there's no apostolic ministry in place, there's no set order in the church, now the ministry or the body of Christ is, is operating main. Operate body of Christ is operating lame. It's like operating with one hand tied behind your back, trying to build something up when the apostolic ministry is not present. So powerful. That's so powerful. So we need the apostolic ministry to be present. Good to see you, Elder Jason Muniz. Good to see you. So, so... So, Prophet Mike, when you think about the apostolic ministry, why is it that more people are flocking to the prophetic and they're moving away from the apostolic dimension? Uh, I think that more, most people are moving to the prophetic versus the apostolic because in the prophetic, it's, most people are just giving you a feel-good message. It's all about just, just hearing God. And there's no – because with the apostolic, it causes you to be more disciplined. It causes you to seek the word of God. It causes you to have a foundation – laid on God's word and not on your own intellect or what you feel like God is saying in, in that particular season. So I think that most people, they just flock to the to the prophetic because it seems like it's just free, it's just open. Oh, people just say, oh, I had a dream. The Lord told me this, and they just go out without having a foundation laid on God's word and seeking God's principles. So I think that's why people flock to the prophetic versus the apostolic. Wow and wow. That is so, listen, that's so powerful and so in-depth. I hope that y'all caught that, uh, that, those feedbacks that these elders shared. And so, Deacon Antonio, when you think about the apostolic and how it relates to other four, the other four-fold ministries in the five-fold ministry, um, why is it important to have that apostolic to work together with the prophet, the pastor, teacher, and evangelist? Because we're living in a day and time now where most churches, they emphasize pastoral ministries, teaching ministries, and somehow we have neglected evangelistic ministry as well. But they're, they're emphasizing the pastoral and teaching ministry. But why is it important for the apostolic to dance? I call it a dance. To dance with the other four, four ministries. I think, uh, I think it's very important because if, in, in anything, even if, you, if you're saying any recipe, if you're missing something, it's not going to be complete. I think a lot of, a lot of times people uh, kind of shun or, or shy away from the apostolic or the, or the apostle in the fivefold because... The apostle is going to be the one that's going to set order. We live in a day and time where so much is uh, so much is um, um, marketed to us as freedom. Everything seems to be free, but you're only really free when you're in order. Only when you're in God's order would do you really experience freedom because everything outside of God's order is what's going to be under subjection. So only when you're when you're walking according to God's principles and doing those things according to the way that God sees fit, which the apostle will be able to institute into the fivefold. Only then will you really tr experience freedom. And I think so many, so many times people just, they, they, since we don't have accountability in every area of our life, when we come to church, we don't want to get accountability there either. It's so, it's so, it seems like it's so much, uh, so much uh, freelance in the world that now when you come to church where you feel like, well, I'm supposed to only come and feel happiness. I'm supposed to only come and cry. I'm supposed to only come and get some kind of emotionalism out of it. When it's time for, for some meat to be given to you or some, some equipment, some building up, then that's when it seems foreign or it seems like a hard thing so because you, we're not used to it. So, do you, get to tell me, you believe that many people run away from the building ministry, the, the ministry that put muscles on you. That's why they don't embrace the apostolic. They, run, they go to the ministries that benefit them but not build them. Oh, yeah. I, I think 100%. I think, I think – and a part of it is, you know – uh, just their upbringing or the, up, or the society period. Society, society is conditioning us to not want to face anything that's uncomfortable. Anything that's going to be uncomfortable, then we just rather not deal with it because it's so much other stuff out there that's not going to require anything of me. So if it's not going to require anything of me, I'd rather do that. I'd rather go to something that's not going to ask me that, oh, uh, have you been in your word or have you been praying? I want to go somewhere where they're just going to tell me that regardless of anything I do, I'm going to receive God's promises. They, they, they leave out the conditionality of it in order to, for people to feel good about themselves. That's really, really good because, you know, pastors sometimes, pastors are really focused on, you know, the sheep eating God's word. They're focused on the sheep nurturing themselves in God's word. But it seems like the apostles, they're more focused on disciples. Pastors are focused on believers, but apostles are focused on disciples. That's good. And I think that um, because of that challenge 
that the apostolic ministry brings to the body to become a disciple of Christ, they have become literally unpopular. Now, we're not talking about businessmen who call themselves prophets or apostles. We're talking about true apostles according to the biblical paradigm. Yeah. Um, like, like Paul, they was unpopular. Peter was unpopular. Most of these guys were unpopular because they, they, they taught the unadulterated truth. But it was all about discipling the soul, the spirit, and the body of the believer. And so I think uh, there's, a, there's a lot of identity crisis going on now in the body of Christ because oh, yeah. we have teachers calling themselves apostles. We have prophets calling themselves evangelists or calling themselves pastors. And we have, you know, uh, uh, pastors calling themselves um, prophets. But there's no clear order there. There's no clear understanding on what is the proper role. What, is, what did God call you to do? What is the assignment? What is the function that 